Hey everybody, Forever Retro 82 here. Hope you're staying safe and being well out there. So last week we looked at some Atari arcade ports during the what so-called golden age of the arcade. Now I would like to take a step forward to the NES and see how they fared with these same games. And I'll of course give my opinion on those and then if you have opinions or memories with them you can please let, them in the, let me know in the comments below. And without uh, further ado, let's get started, shall we? Okay, here we have Galaxium for the Famicom. It was released twice for the Famicom, believe it or not. It was released uh, September 17th of, in 1979 in Japan, while it was released February 2nd, 1980 over here in the States. Now, unfortunately, we never got Galaxian over here in the States. It was released on the Famicom in 1984, September 7th of 1984. Uh, on the Famicom, and it was rele released later in 1990 for the disc system, which I don't understand the reason behind that, but they have their reasons, because it was cheaper to manufacture, but by 1990, yeah, that's about uh, 11 years since the release of Galaxian and the coin-op. Why release it for a second time? I don't know. Namco's good on that. Also, I thought I'd go ahead and point out that Namco did not like to release games in the United States at all. Uh, apparently, they were not a fan of the whole five games per year law that they had in, state, in, in, in place. They also didn't like the costs of the license fee in America. Now, you may say, well, they released games in America. Sure they did, but not under their own publishing name. No, they used Bandai and Tengen. For, to post port most of their games, like for instance, Dragon Spirit: The New Le the, uh, the New Legend, that was ported by Na uh, or put over. It was developed by Namco, but it was put over here by Bandai. Uh, Galaga, the sequel to this wonderful game, was also ported by uh, Bandai, and it was brought over here. Now it's a shame that Bandai wasn't a Nintendo licensee when this was released. But then again, this was 1984. NES wasn't released here until 1985, so that could be the reason. I don't know the entire story forgive me for my ignorance anyways let's take a look at this now as you can see there's space in the background so this, that already has one up over the Atari let's see how it sounds has the arcade cues has a look of the arcade as well now I do notice that the, the sound is very high pitched but it does play like the arcade. Now, if you notice in the Atari version when I played it, you notice that the uh, laser was off-center. I should have pointed that out when I made that video. But yeah, it was off-center. And I was like, what the bloody hell? I should have mentioned that. I'm pretty sure some of you saw it. But yeah, we gotta deal with Galaxians all dive-bombing me and trying to take me out of existence. But, and as you can tell, there's more enemies to kill, unlike the Atari version as well. That could have done without that. <laughs> so I don't agree with the sound design here. I mean, it sounds true to the arcade, but the samples they used are just ugly to me. I don't know if it's because it's too high pitched because of the PSG. Ah, uh, not a sound designer, so I can't point that out. But it's pretty much the same as you would expect of of Galaxian if you played it in the arcade. But it's still a very damn good and competent port. It looks great. But that sound is... That ri what is with that ringing sound? It wasn't that bad in the arcades, from what I remember. It's like, dude, I don't... I have tinnitus as it is most of the time. I don't want that ringing sound to be bugging me. It makes me want to see if I can find the phone. I mean, back in the day, what if you were playing this and your mom thought the phone was ringing, you know? But then again, it wasn't released in, in the States, you know. Some Japanese uh, woman would be all pissed off about it. She'd go look at you and be like, Bacalo! Damn it! <laughs> but yeah, it looks like the arcade. The black scenes look as they should. It has the sound design of the arcade. I don't like the samples, so They're a little too high-pitched for my liking. Which is unfortunate, but... It's still fine. It's still fine. It still plays like your Galaxian. I mean, you have the space background. You have the, the Gal Galaxians and all that. And it plays just like your... I mean, there's not much I can really say. I mean, I've already touched base. But, I mean, if I were to compare this to the uh, the Atari version, 
I mean, it's no brainer that obviously the Famicom was better powered and better uh, equipped to handle a port such as this nature. It even has a nice little demo screen from the arcade. So this is definitely a damn close to arcade port. The sound design is, like I said, I'm going to say that one more time. The sound design, I'm not a fan of. The game looks great, though. It's well animated. It's well presented. And the the uh, your projectile is actually in the center. I still think the head of your ship looks like that of a swollen penis about ready to shoot its load. You know the whole saying, the purple-headed yogurt slinger? Yep, that's what that reminds me of for some reason. <laughs> Hey, I got one of my own, and I'm, I'm happy to have it, unlike some men out there. But anyways, uh, yeah, so this was Galaxian. Awesome game. Uh, good. The arcade game itself was great, but this was definitely an awesome home conversion. I mean, I'm kind of jealous of people in Japan. They actually had this on a competition system. I mean, we did get Galaga. We did get Galaga over here, but, you know, Se Galaxian still has a piece in history. I mean, it was a sh space shooter, as you can see. You know, but at the same time, it just would have been cool to have both of them over here. I mean, obviously, that's been corrected with thankful, thankfully to Namco for making them Namco museums and the plug-and-plays and whatever. I don't think they'll ever stop releasing their top-tier titles. That could be a good or a bad thing. You can get be sick of it or not. I mean, it, I guess they just want to make sure every generation gets to enjoy the Golden Age. So with that being said, let's go look at another classic, shall we? Alright, next we're going to check out a Dig Dug for the Famicom. I never played this port. Uh, truth be told, I have never played this port. Uh, this, was on the, this was on the Nintendo Wii Virtual Console, and my wife had it. I never got a chance to play it there either. Because uh, I just never got a chance to play it. Because, you know, I've had my fill in the Atari version, and I also had uh, Namco Museum uh, 50th Anniversary Collection on my GameCube, so I didn't see the need. However, we're going to go ahead and check it out for today. This was released um, in, 19, in June 4th, uh, 1985 for the for the Famicom, and it was released in February 20th, 1982 in the arcades. So, uh, yeah, so it was. this was made in 1985. Uh, so, once again, this was during the release date of the, the Famicom, because, or the... The, the year that the NES was launched here in America, 1985. So, basically, once again, we didn't get this port. We got the sequel, though, uh, but I don't like the sequel. <laughs> Dig Dug 2 was not my jam. I did like it for a little bit, but it just, it just got stupid later on. And I don't know. I just prefer the simplicity of this. Anyways, let's give it a try. Holy shit, this is arcade perfect. Like, the look and everything. Let's see how the sound design is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got some arcade goodness right here. Fuck yeah. I mean, I... Wow. I'm, blown, I'm like, literally blown away of just how this... How ar almost arcade perfect this is. Eat shit, you fat bastard. Yes! <laughs> Die, you piece of shit. There we go. It's Dig Dug, man. It's got the colors. It's got the sprite work. The fire animation on the dragons looks amazing. For the Famicom. I mean, that's that's fluid. Namco did a damn good job. It's under their Namcot logo. I thought Namcot was their international label. Am I wrong on that? Please correct me in the comments. I love how gruesome it looks when you blow them up in this version, too. <laughs> I mean, it's just gruesome anyways, because you're blowing them like fuckers up. I mean, look at this fucking poor thing's stomach just blows up. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe that's that why they didn't release it either. Because, you know, Nintendo was censor-happy back then. I mean, in some ways, they still are. But they do allow sex games on the Switch. So, hmm. And Sony's the one that's uh, censoring them. So, hmm. Kind of makes you wonder, you know? But yeah, this is this is Dig Dug all the way. It's it's perfect. It's got perf the perfect sound design. None of the sound design gets on my nerves like it did like for the Galaxian. It's got all the music cues. It controls perfectly well. It looks great, too. I mean, honestly, this is a definite arcade port that is like 1-1 one, one with the arcade for the most part. I mean, there's a couple, su couple subtle differences, like I could tell in the colors, but nothing that's just grating or making your eyes bleed. It doesn't feel like your eyes are getting raped out or gouged out with anything. I mean, it looks the part perfectly. 
I mean, if I was a kid that was a Dig Dug fan, which I was, and you gave me this for my NES, if it was released in America, that is, I would have been a happy fucking camper. I'd be smashing these fuckers with rocks. I'd be blowing motherfuckers up. Yeah, 10,000 points, extra life. But still, I mean, is it better than the Atari? Well, yes, in terms of, like, graphic... God damn it, I forgot about that. They like to get together and they trick you. I hate that shit. Anyways, yes, but at the same time, you got... Okay, I'm not playing anymore. Y'all going down. Fuck all y'all. Damn it, I was trying to go up. Shit. Yeah, those most, most... They're going out for blood. They're like, oh, Big Doug's dead. It's time to kill his ass. <laughs> Oh, look, it's what everyone considers a penis when it comes to ascending to... Nah, I'm dead. Fuck off. Now, what's great about Dig Dug is that I believe it, it, it uses the... Uh, the oh, I forgot the board, excuse my ignorance, but the same arcade board as Pac-Man did. So, you basically, it's pretty much the same thing. I think Rally X used the same one as well. I don't remember that. I'll have to put that in post. But, um, yeah, Dig Dug on the Famicom. I, this was a pleasant surprise. It's arcade perfect. And, you know, I... It wasn't until, like, way, way, way later until I did finally got to play Dig Dug in the arcade. And, uh, and to be honest, me being a stupid fuck, I preferred the Atari version at first. Because I'm like, this ain't the version I grew up with, what the fuck? You know, you get kind of like that when it comes to nostalgia. But you know what? It's like, I still don't prefer the arcade. Having played this version, I have to say I prefer this, even though it's based off the arcade. But it just it's simple, it's fun, it it's not made to eat quarters because that version was tough as shit. The arcade version of Dig Dog was bullshit hard. It's definitely that for the elite, and I'm not the elite. I'm just a guy that just enjoys like, playing games from time to time, you know. I, I wouldn't call myself a casual, no, I don't you know you'll never sell, see me sitting there playing games on a cell phone or a tablet or nothing. I do have a couple on mine, but not like a whole shit ton. And, you know. This is cool, though. This is if you're a Dig Dug fan and you collect Famicom games, I really uh, suggest you get 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 this game. It's awesome. If you collect, that is, uh, you know. But with the retro boom, it'll probably cost you an arm and leg. I haven't really checked to see how much what much they go it goes for these days. But yeah, uh, yeah. So this this was Dig Dug. What a pleasant surprise! It's really awesome. All right. Well, with that being said, I guess it's time to move on to the next one, huh? No, your eyes don't deceive you. The Famicom did get a release of Space Invaders. It was released once again in 1985. Now, here's the thing and I'm confused about this, right? Space Invaders was released in 1978 in the arcade. Okay? This was approximately seven, about seven years, six and a half, seven years since its initial release. The, the world has moved on from that point. So, what was Taito hoping they would create when making this game this late to the life of the, the Famicom. I mean, there's already been, like, uh, it's Space Invaders Part 2. There's been, like, Asteroids Deluxe, even though it's a totally different game. You know, people kind of have moved on from the whole space thing by this point. I mean, there are still some shooters out there, but they weren't as high in the market as much as it was, like, a few years prior. I mean, I suppose the game... I mean, the game did cause a yen shortage in Japan, so that is probably their only reasoning to release it for the Famicom. Because they're like, oh, you know, people who want to take the experience home, you know, let's release it for the Famicom, since the Famicom is more than capable to make arcade ports. So let's go ahead and make it, and that's probably what they had in mind. I did not... I... I was only three years old in 1985, man. I was watching Thundercats and... And try not to wet the bed. I don't know what the fuck that everyone else was doing, but everyone else had their lives at that point in time. But anyways, let's go ahead and check. Uh, let's see how this port is. I understand this game was on many pirated carts back in the day. I really never get a chance to play this. I think that's cute how the little alien grabs the the Y and makes it right side up. That's cute. So, anyways, let's take a look. It's our, it's standard arcade. The sounds are, you know, a little different, you know, because it's the Famicom. Because the arcade had more like a laser, like, digitized sound, I want to say. But it has the same pacing, this same kind of arcade, uh, excuse me, aliens and 
It plays pretty much the same. Now, what they should have done is put the background from the arcade in this. Not like 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 a pixelated version of it. They could have done something like that. Instead of a black background. I understand this was 1985. But they could have done something. Because this is just too plain of a presentation. The Atari had the excuse. Get the bastard. Fuck. <laughs> I can't, I, me and the UFOs, man. We have a love-hate relationship. Fuck. Um, so, yes. Um... Let me see if I can get my bearing straight when it comes to my opinion on this. It's it, it is Space Invaders for sure, but and your your ship looks the part. The sound design is similar to the arcade, just with NES sounds. Ugh, son of a bitch! It is harder. It is a little harder than the Atari version, that's for sure. Now, but like I said, the Atari had an excuse that was released in 1980, and I just died. Fuck. We'll play again. Play again. We're gonna at least beat one round of these, but yeah, you have all pretty much all the aliens are account accounted for. Can't can for yeah. I know English. Hooked on phonics works for me. No, anyways, yeah. So it does it does play like the arcade version. I mean, I don't know why they wasted their time though, because like I said, people moved on. I mean, fuck me, Galaxian was made a year prior to this, and it was a much better game. But then again, I think. People have noticed I have maybe a slight bias towards Space Invaders. And I really don't. It's just... The first one especially is just... Dull. I understand it was a big deal back then, but it's like... It just seems like it, just, it loses its entertainment value. I mean, there's no music. I mean, the Atari version, that marching sound was more menacing than... Doo, 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 doo. I mean, is this supposed to be music? Because I'm not impressed. I would have loved the marching sound that they had, like, on the Atari 2600 version. So, it looks better than that version. It does look better than the Atari. I mean, that's... To be said, but... You know, you have different modes on the Atari version that actually change up the gameplay. So, here's my verdict. At least, opinion-wise. Is, if... If you want, like, different, mo like, uh, modif modified versions of Space Invaders, and you don't mind the dated look of it, play the Atari version. But if you just want the straight-up arcade experience without any kind of change, the Famicom version is pretty much the way to go. Or you can, you know, skip all that and get one of Taito's Legend compilations for the PS2. We're beating a level before I move on. This is pissing me off. The rate of fire pisses me off, too. The Atari version, you actually, when the guys were lower like they are, you could sit there and just shoot, like, a few of them. You, saw, you guys saw the video. This is just... Oh, my God. It just takes for fucking ever to shoot these fuckers. And they're a little bit more aggressive, too, which is, you know, it's understand understandable. It is a port of an arcade. They probably wanted to make it as close as they can, but I notice I'm hitting less aliens than hitting them. It's annoying me. <laughs> Could, could be me and my lack of uh, aiming skills, or it could just be the fact I'm impatient. I don't know about y'all, you, you motherfuckers out there, but I'm an impatient man sometimes. It's like, move your fucking ass! You want to take over the Earth, right? You're doing it very slowly. You know, you're run to the fucking stealth bomber, and they're going to end your ass because those fuckers fly at fucking high speeds while you guys just... So you hear March and March and March and March some more. I mean, like I said, this I mean, they could have put some stars in the background. This is just Taito, you're lazy, yo. <laughs> okay, that's raising my anxiety a little bit. I still think the Atari has that 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 beat though. Dude, hit the bitches! What the fuck, man? Yeah, see, I had the same problem with the arcade version of uh, Space Invaders. I played that at Cedar Point with my friend Carl back in the day when we went together. I'm not going to even focus on the UFO anymore. I'm just going to see if I can gun down these sons of bitches. For fuck's sake, man. Why is it pause when you hit an enemy? That's weird. I've never seen that before. Okay. Now that sound is not good. Hit something, you're freaking me out. Come on. Come on! Oh my god, that sound. You're a bitch. 
Okay, you have to wait before you reappear before you can shoot this son of a bit. Fuck this port. <laughs> Got it. All right, we're done. Fuck this. I do not like this port. I do not like this port. This port, it plays like the arcade version. It does. It has pretty much the same amount of aliens. It has the sounds. It has pretty much nearly everything. But the lack of a background, how slow it is, and it's just not fun. The Atari version I can play at least a couple rounds before I get bored, because that's fine enough. This version is just, it's a pain in the dick. First of all, it's really hard to shoot the enemies. I have the same problem in the arcade too, but eventually you kind of get like a groove. This version, I just do not get that same groove. Kind of like with Kaboom, you know, you find your you find your zen spot and then you go for it. I'm... I do not like this port. <laughs> it's 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 too boring for my taste. I mean, like the original arcade one's not that fun, but at the same time, though, you could play a couple. You know, you could throw a couple quarters in it, and give it a go, and have your fill. But I don't know if I would ever buy like a version like this for home. I get bored of it within the first week of purchase and regret my purchase. Because I mean, Famicom or e even NES carts weren't all that cheap. I mean, they were like thirty dollars. At least from memory, I could be wrong on that, but I remember NES carts being like 30, 40 bucks, and then like SNES games being like $70, depending on where you went. I mean, for some reason, Toys R Us seemed to have had them cheaper. Ooh, I got an extra life. Or as Bart Simpson would say, oh, another free game. Or I want a free game. That's an episode where you see Polybius in the background. That episode kind of depresses me, because it remind you know, it's like, it's Springfield Ball's all dead and shit. And it's like, you know, a lot of malls around me died shortly after that. I just wanted to hit one uh, UFO for the sake of the video. Maybe I can get this one too. Fuck it. And then I'll have my fill of Space Invaders. Yeah, I do not... Yeah, the Atari version was a lot more fun than this. Because of the variations. If we had different variations here, I would highly respect this a lot more. Nah, I'm dead. That's good. Fuck. I'm done. I'm done with this game. I don't like to play. Yeah, like, it's not horrible, but if you're, like, a fanatic of Space Invaders, you'll like this. I do not like this version, though. I will say that until I'm blue in the face. This, this, I did not have fun with that at all. It was just boring. Really boring. I mean, at least the arcade version, you know, they had a background to look at, and... It, I think the pacing was a little better too, if memory serves me. I have the, I have the title uh, Legends Arc uh, PS2 ports. I need to go check those out, and I can tell you guys at a later date if you're interested. But uh, yeah, I do not like Space Invaders on this at all. I'll stick with the arcade version. I mean, now that I got different ways of playing the arcade coin op. I don't need to play this or the Atari version. So let's just move on to the next one. All right, so we're basically we're look at now. Uh, we're gonna take a look at Donkey Kong Jr. on the NES. I mean, it was near arcade perfect, but it has uh, some of its shortcomings. It was released in 1982, and of course made in Japan. But we also got it here in the United States. It was a launch title. We also got um, see what I have in my collection is Donkey Kong Classics. It's a multi-cart that Nintendo released that had Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. Uh, which was, of course, hey, kick ass. You got two games in one. So you got, you know, got the original game and the sequel. But, you know, some people love and hate the original Donkey Kong on the NES because it has a missing level. But to me, it's it's good enough. It looks the part, plays the part. So it's basically, good. this is going to be arcade perfect because a lot of people um, have stated this. And, I mean, I haven't played this in years, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be near arcade perfect. But... It's going to be a better than the Arca Atari version, that's for sure. Because the Atari version was not that good. It's been years since i played this, so forgive my sloppiness. So, as you can tell, Donkey Kong Jr. looks like Donkey Kong Jr. He doesn't look like a fucking duck like he did in the original. And look at that, you got fruit to attack enemies with. You didn't have that in the Atari version. Of course, you have this little catchy... Music that can get on your nerves over time. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's pretty much arcade perfect. It's got the same sound, everything. Sprite work is great. The little chompers look like chompers. They don't look like little C's that are having seizures. I hate this stage because I always fuck up on it. But for the sake of the video, I will do my best. Okay, where do I go from here? Ah, oh, there we go. Get, no, don't, okay. Hey, I never got that way. I always would fuck up at on those little, what are those? Are they, uh, they, like, they look like cums, like, dripping down from the, that, you know what I'm talking about? Those little yellow things. I don't know what the hell is, is that supposed to be. Looks like jizz, this dr or tree sap, maybe, even. I don't fucking know. Ah, I never beat that level before in the NES version. Yes! <laughs> yeah, this is arcade perfect. If you've Oh, God. I'm just looking at this, and I dread it. But it's... Notice, it's different from the Atari version, but it doesn't mean it's going to be any easier. Mario's a dick! <laughs> First you're him, and now he's the bad guy. Maybe the only time in the whole Nintendo history that Mario was a bad guy. Well, a lot different from the Atari version. You had the little chompers. You didn't have any of this shit. No! So damn close! Of course, they had to rub it in by showing Donkey Don Kong Jr. dropping down to his fucking death. What is with this music, though? Or if you want to classify this as music. I feel like I'm playing YY World from Konami. As a pretty much that same computer-esque sound that you would hear. Like when you were talking to the doctor, when he basically tells you to fuck off after he's done talking to you. I think that was a mistranslation, but I could be wrong. Well, that motherfucker is moving fast. Come on! Yes! <sighs> yeah, I've, Donkey Kong Jr. on the NES is the proper... See, this is the the last stage. Now, as you all saw in the Atari version, that was the second stage. They fucked that all up. But goddamn, this hard as shit. And my game is over. Damn, I was hoping to at least beat this fucking game. Damn, I mean... So, yeah. So, but I played enough to... That's the final stage. So, yeah, it's pretty much arcade perfect. It's got the sound intact, the look. It's a lot of fun. I mean, compared to the arcade version... Or, not the arcade, excuse me. Uh, the Atari version. I mean, this this is what... See, this is why I like Nintendo... I love Nintendo from the 80s, especially. Is... When they, when they made ports from arcade to home, they were pretty much as close to the arcade as they possibly could get it, and it was absolutely fantastic. But yeah, Donkey Kong Jr. on the NES is so much better than the Atari version, like in every conceivable way. You have better sound design, better graphics, better animation, and, you know, I, like I said, I may be too harsh on the Atari because of how limited it is in terms of tech, and what they were able to pull off was fantastic. It was. But at the same time, uh, I mean, Nintendo is the one that made the Atari version. It was published by Coleco. So Nintendo, I mean, I don't. First of all, I don't know why they were wasting their time with making ports on other systems at the time, especially when they knew somewhere in their head that I mean, this was like before the NES was released here in America. I mean, I guess maybe they were just trying to make a little bit of chump change before uh, they were going to release their own system over here. But yeah, that was the only time that Nintendo was third party for a little bit. Even though Atari's third party is not really third party. I mean, as long as you had the know-how how to make a game for it back then, you really didn't have to contact Atari. You could just release it. I mean, you have games like Made by Mystique and all that, the porn games as they're referred to as. But, yeah. Donkey Kong Jr., awesome game. You should, every, every NES fan or Famicom or NES fan. I mean, it was released here in America, so you can get it for the America. But, it, absolutely, if you enjoy games from the golden age of the arcade, you should definitely get this. It plays it's plays wonderfully, it's awesome. 
It's on many compilations. I'm pretty sure it's... I don't know if it's on the Switch Online because I don't have the Switch Online. I'm not paying the money they want for it. To me, it's not worth it, but uh, it could be. Um, it was also released on Wii's Virtual Console. You can hack your Wii and install install the WAD if you want. I mean, there's plenty of ways to play Donkey Kong Jr., but I just love... I love Donkey Kong Jr. I mean, I, I like Donkey Kong Jr. better than Donkey Kong. I always have. It just feels more fleshed out because... It's just fun. And that's all that matters in the end, right? Is if you have fun. Because if you don't have fun, then what's the point of playing a game in the first place? If it's not fun, guess what? You're going to walk away from it, and you're never going to play it again. That's usually how it goes. Anyways, let's go ahead and look at the final game in this um, lovely uh, medley of arcade to NES ports. Now, come on. You guys knew we had to go ahead and see... What version of this game is better? I mean, I don't need to say anything. Anyways, <laughs> now this version I have here, or that I loaded here, is when Namco finally, finally um, went ahead and purchased an NES license, and they released this as a re late release on the NES under the Na Namco Home Tech label. That's what they were known for before they just became strictly Namco. Because here's the thing, they released this version before. It was on the uh, Tengen label. Now the reason why Tengen was, now the Tengen for a short time was a developer for, for the NES. They had their license and they paid for it and everything. They did that for a reason though. What they wanted to do is they wanted to learn how the lockout chip and how the workings of the NES pretty much worked. And what they did was they made a mock or, re, or reverse engineered a lockout chip of their own and they started creating, you may have seen them in the market, the black cartridges. Like Shinobi, uh, like that was a Sega game, Space Harrier, Fantasy Zone, Sega games. And they also had Namco games like Rolling Thunder. You know, I'll post a picture right here. These were the black Tengen card. Those were the black Tengen cartridges. Of course, there was a lawsuit and... Yeah, I don't, it didn't end well for Tengen because they uh, went bankrupt in 1984. I don't recall who won. I think Nintendo did because, I don't know, reverse engineering, I guess, is just a, considered a way of piracy. What they were trying to do was release games on a platform by and basically, I mean, there are plenty of unlicensed Nintendo games on the NES. You had Wisdom Tree. No one went after them because they were Christian. Um, then you had uh, the Color Dreams. No one gave a shit enough, I guess. Uh, but Tengen was a big deal because you had games that were made by other um, companies that were in the industry, such as Sega and Namco. And also there's some Atari games too, even, like Roadrunner. The arcade version of Roadrunner was released on the NES under the Tengen label. And they were basically reverse engineered it and uh, so they could release games on a platform without paying the licensing fees because a lot of companies believe that Nintendo's licensing fees, I don't know the number off the top of my head, but uh, were too high. And the whole, of course, the making the whole five games a year thing was ridiculous. And I know why Nintendo did that, is to avoid oversaturation because that's what happened with the Atari. There was way much saturation. It's like everything had a game. Even dog food had a game. Uh, <laughs> Purina. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I think it was called... Uh, oh, shit. I don't remember. Um, I'll let you know. But, yeah. It, so, basically, let's play a little bit of Pac-Man. I mean, obviously, we know which version is going to be better. But let's just see. Let's just check it out. Just in case none of you have played this port. I'm pretty sure all of you had. But just, just in case, you know. Like I said, this is pretty much we're comparing the Atari to what the NES was able to do. And... Kind of like how far technology has gone from that point to this point. So there you go. So let's play a little bit of Pac-Man. Alright, the sound is a little different, but this looks like Pac-Man. <laughs> this, unlike the Atari. I mean, first of all, you have the exits on the sides instead of up and down. The sound, while a little different, is still act into the arcade. It's almost... And look, there's fruit, not a fucking block! Let's see if I can get it. Yay! I'm no Pac-Man uh, uh, champion. I, I'm not a very good Pac-Man player at all. But I love Pac-Man. Always have. This Pac-Man is probably one of my favorites of all time. 
the original still holds a whole uh, a warm place in my heart, though, for real, because it's just you know it's part of my childhood. I was like I said, I was lividly pissed off though when I found out that the Atari game was not the its arcade experience in the slightest. Now, if you gave me this, on the other hand, this is pretty close to the arcade. The sound is a little different, and that may bother some people, but I'm fine with it. I mean, it's Pac-Man. <laughs> I mean, what can I say? This is simple as it gets, and he was like, like the first fucking hero we had in the in the uh, video game community. 1980, guys. I mean, Pac-Man. Pac-Man's as simple as it gets. You just go through maze and eat some dots, and then you move on to the next stage. It's as simple as it gets, but it's very addictive and fun. You know, this game was actually marketed towards women. It wasn't marketed towards men, but it caught on with everybody, so Namco had a hit on their um, hands when they released it. And of course, I think most people know the whole uh, story behind how the Pac-Man character was thought of. Uh, that one of the developers uh, went to lunch, we got some pizza, and when a slice was taken out, they looked at the shape of Pac-Man and said, oh, look. That's pa that's gonna be Pac-Man. You know, and this game was also called Puck-Man, but they changed the name because people were putting the F-word in front of it, so it was Fuck-Man. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I mean, there's so much trivia with Pac-Man that you can look up yourself that it's just... It makes for a good read, you know, if you're drinking some tea and you're bored as fuck and have nothing better to do. I mean, I can safely say that this version may be a little easier than the arcade, because I do not play this good in the arcade at all. <laughs> Especially when hammered, I think... Ah, uh, I'm fucked. <laughs> ah, that's high-pitched! Don't like that. <laughs> but yeah I'm, yeah, I'm getting a little um, ahead of myself. Uh, but yeah, this is... I mean, it's no surprise. This is how Pac-Man should have been played. In the, but, you know, given that, you know, poor uh, Todd Fry could not make us a competent port on the, on the Atari, he just because he had no what the fuck idea what he was doing, I feel bad for the guy. I wonder how popular pizza is in Japan. Oh, look at this. You even have the uh, cutscenes. He didn't have that in the Atari version. Well, obviously, they couldn't with the tech involved, but still. They should, I mean, I understand why they did it. Because, you know, Pac-Man was a huge deal back in 1980. And they wanted to go ahead and get some form of Pac-Man on the system. And obviously, people liked it enough. It sold 8 million copies. I know, I know I'm still, like, like, I guess, butter over that. Like, why the hell? I just, I just can't see how something that shitty sell that much... I mean, this it was a it was a different time, I guess. I'll play this stage and we'll call it good. That's I'm doing pretty well though. I don't normally do this well on Pac-Man, so I have to get and ah, I spoke too soon. <laughs> now, I one of the things I loved about Pac-Man is when s some smart bastard out there made the speed chip for it. It made the game easier, but it was also f more fun, I thought, because, you know, Pac-Man's just zooming across the board and shit. It made for quick games. I was gonna get that prick, but he was probably gonna turn before I could even get to him. The power p pellets give you... Oh, shit. Well, I'm dead. The power pellets give you basically two kinds of powers in this game. Eat the ghosts and collect some dots. I was hoping to beat Peach, but uh, that wasn't in the cards. But yeah, um... Yep, yeah, so... I mean, come on. We just saw it. Pac-Man plays just like Pac-Man should have played for the Atari, even though the Atari didn't have the thing. I, they did better, though, because, like I said, someone hacked Miss Pac-Man on the Atari, which is a damn good port, by the way. I should have showed that on my original video. But uh, I'm not saying that that's going to be the last of 
five arcade ports, I still intend to revisit the idea and make a part two of that in the future, so keep, you know, keep in mind for that, and I will probably show that then. And you can see how a version of Pac-Man can actually work on the Atari if done properly. So, but I'll have to wait till then. But anyways, this was uh, Pac-Man for the NES. Uh, damn good port. And, you know, it's, like I said, it has an interesting... Most of Namco games have an interesting history because of the whole Tengen label and the whole reverse engineering of the uh, lockout chip. Which was a pretty amazing feat. In fact, I'm going to link you guys a video because the, uh, the gaming historian, being as awesome as he is with his uh, knowledgeability, can definitely show you guys or explain it in better detail than I could, that's for sure. Because he probably had all the facts on hand and I don't. So, Anyways, that was Pac-Man. Okay, so that was some five uh, Famicom and NES ports of some arcade games. Now, you know, my final thoughts, let's again, the Galaxian damn good port, it plays a lot like the arcade. The sound is too high-pitched for my ears, but it still plays like the arcade, and it still has the gameplay as the arcade, so you basically have what you were looking for for an arcade port, or from an uh, arcade to home port. You basically have what you need, so, you know, definitely recommended for if you enjoy Galaxian. Uh, Dig Dug. Dig Dug is arcade perfect on the Famicom. I really wish we could have got that over here in the States. It plays amazingly. It has awesome sound design. The, the colors are very lush and pretty. And it plays just like the arcade. Very fun. Uh, it's a, quite addictive. I mean, I could have sat there and played probably for an hour or two like I could with the Atari version. Dig Dug is just a very addictive game overall. Uh, very fantastic and if you collect Famicom games or you know or if you emulate what you know do whatever it is you have to do but it's definitely a good port but if you have the arcade port and you prefer that that's fine I personally think the arcade port is too hard for me so I do stick with the I'll probably stick with the Famicom and Atari versions from this day on if I if I need a dig dug fix Space Invaders sucked <laughs> I'm sorry uh, Sp you know, I mean, I know I was a little harsh on the Atari version, but I think I was even harsher on the Famicom version. I have every right to be, though, because it's boring. It's completely boring. I mean, the arcade version, like I said, it plays very similar to that. It has that same slow, slow, slow you have to plan your shots kind of deal. But that, I don't like that. That's why I always prefer Galaxian and Galaga over those. I mean, I'm sorry, Namco kicks the living shit out of fucking Taito, and the, especially in the in the dick when it comes to shooters, because, like I said, Space Invaders does have a place in history. Yes, it's loved by many. On the other hand, I like the later revisions of Space Invaders, because they added things to make them more enjoyable and more fun to play. But Galaxian, Galaga, and Galpus, those games are fucking awesome. Now, Space Invaders was updated for, I believe it was in the arcade, but there's also a Genesis version, uh, Space Invaders 91, which much better much better but then again it's a later revision of or a later entry into Space Invaders saga you know and of course I mentioned I played it on stream before the Space Invaders Extreme that's great I wish they would release the sequel on Steam but they have not which is a shame because they released it for both the PlayStation Portable and the Nintendo DS 1 and 2 so you have both of those games on it's, pr it's pretty much the same game with the little things added I don't know, maybe that could have been Taito. Well, Taito, I believe, is owned by Squeenix now, so... And that's a problem. Uh, but, yeah. So, Square Enix. Squeenix. Call them what you will. I mean, I personally, I think Square Enix... Or Square Soft and Enix were fine as their own companies, not combined. That's just my opinion. Take that as you will. Let's uh, see. Uh, yeah, Donkey Kong con uh, Country. Nope. A generation behind there, buddy. <laughs> Donkey Kong Jr., fun ass game uh the nes version famicom version both fantastic they play just like the arcade it has a sound everything i mean everything is just fun about the game it's a, it's a toughie but you know there's a lot of people that can probably make go many many loops and it's like nothing to them but you know me i'm not the greatest donkey kong player i mean you saw me trying to fucking do that got my ass kicked on the whole trying to get the keys in the right place and uh, it's harder on the NES version compared to the Atari version because while well, there's more keys to deal with than there is on the Atari version, you only have like three and you have like, like what, six, seven and anyways, for, anyways that's not important. And then finally Pac-Man, I mean Pac-Man a hundred times better than the Atari version, but I don't know. Uh, there's three versions of that too, well not, well, not exactly, uh, there, but, but also at the same time. What I mean by this is like I said, 
Tengen became a license for Nintendo so they could learn the uh, schematics. And then they made the black cart version. Then later on, Namco finally bought themselves or got themselves a Nintendo license to create games for Nintendo because it was around 93 that they took away that law of five games per year. It was also around the same time that Nintendo no longer had a monopoly on the market. So there you go. Uh, so that's it. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to link you guys to the gaming historian if you want uh, his video on the whole Tengen lockout chip because it's a very informative, very awesome He's also a pretty good guy, um, and that about pretty much covers that. So I hope you enjoyed this video for what it's worth. I am for Rush Radio 2. I am signing off. You guys have a great night. Take good care of yourselves, and remember, as always, keep gut. Keep. You know I hate that. <laughs> I'm trying to make my clothing line, and I always fuck it up. I'm not drunk either. I haven't drank at all uh, since Saturday. So there, there's that. <laughs> keep gaming, keep loving, and keep it retro. There we go. You guys take care of your cells, stay safe out there, and we'll see you again very soon. Until then, take care. Thank you for watching my video. If you liked what you saw and would like to support my channel, please consider being a patron. I'll put your name up with these fine folks who have donated to this channel, and that would be awesome to have you on board. If not, that's entirely up to you. I hope you have a good day and take care.